A couple of years ago, Toyota finally brought back the coveted Supra nameplate after a nearly 25 year long hiatus. Now, it was pretty much everything that enthusiasts wanted, and over the years, Toyota has made steady improvements in order to keep sales strong of this vehicle. It actually goes up almost every year. Now, one option that has been sorely lacking from the option list has been a proper manual transmission. And today, I'm happy to report Toyota has finally rectified that mistake because we are finally driving the 2023 Toyota GR Supra in this. A91 MT Special Edition. And to drive this vehicle out and see if it was worth the wait, we're actually out here at Utah Motorsports Campus with this nearly 400 horsepower rear wheel drive sport coupe and with a proper ZF source six speed manual transmission. I know the big question I want answered. For those of you who have been waiting for a Supra because you were holding out for a stick, was that wait worth it? Stay tuned to find out. Now this generation GR Supra has been around for a couple years, but you guys would be surprised to hear that every time I get behind the wheel of this car, it actually still turns heads everywhere. And that's because of the styling. Toyota really did a great job. Even with the new Z now on the marketplace, this car still has a pretty loyal fan base. Now, before we talk about the exterior styling differences of this model here, I wanna show you guys what's underneath the hood. Now, if you guys want the stick shift, it is limited to the three liter turbocharged straight six. Thank you, for Toyota, thank you to Toyota for not putting this with the four cylinder engine, which means we have a BMW source B58 twin scroll single turbo straight six making 382 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque those numbers are unchanged and you guys know with german vehicles those numbers are also typically underrated we probably see that power actually at the crank it now goes out through a ZF sourced six speed manual transmission. Now Toyota says this transmission was designed exclusively for the Supra. It has IMT, which is their uh, active rev matching function. Um, Toyota basically says they had to redesign the clutch, redesign some of the ratios. The final drive uh, ratio is actually lower to aid with acceleration. Uh, so this isn't just some kind of off the shelf that's just bolted on. Toyota says they properly tuned this to work with the uh, three liter straight six engine. Now the fuel economy did take a hit when you guys go with the manual. It's rated at 19 in the city and 27 on the highway. That's about a three to four MPG hit compared to the automatic. But for those of you who must have a stick shift, you're not gonna be worried about that anyways. Performance Toyota says is impressive with the manual. Zero to 60, you should be able to do it in 4.2 seconds. Of course, that's gonna depend on road conditions, on how well you shift gears, on tires, the tires hooking up because this vehicle is only rear wheel drive, a limited slip differential is included and the top speed is around 155 miles an hour. So compared to the automatic, this is only about 0.3 seconds slower, zero to 60. So it's not really that much that you're giving up by going with the manual. Now, what you do gain, however, is by going with the manual, the curb weight actually drops by nearly 100 pounds. This vehicle here, as it sits, weighs a tick over 3,300 pounds. The automatic is around 3,400 pounds. So that's a nice improvement and a nice uh, weight reduction. But let's go ahead and close the hood and show you guys the rest of the styling. This model here is a special edition called A91MT. There's only gonna be 500 of these made for 2023, and it's only available in two colors, See You Later Gray and Burnout. This is the matte finish color. Burnout, if you think of a cloud of smoke, is white. That's where the inspiration of this color came from. Uh, and, and overall, you can see the design hasn't really changed. You still have these really, really unique looking headlights. They're full LEDs with the LED daytime running light, LED turn signals. Some of the vents are functional, like the ones down here, and then some of them, unfortunately, are fake. There's also uh, vents on the hood, which are also fake, but Toyota says you can actually uh, take out the cutouts and make them functional if you'd like. I just kind of think they should have done that from the factory. And in this matte finished paint, which I wanna mention is about $1,700 more. It definitely looks good, but you guys probably are aware the matte finished paint also is going to come with certain compromises. You're gonna to have to hand wash this vehicle. Uh, and if you guys get like bird droppings on it, it's going to ruin the finish. So you wanna make sure that you take care of that almost immediately. And looking around the rest of the side profile, you can see, uh, the side profile hasn't really changed. The Supra is about the same size as a 718 Cayman, the main competitor, and the new Nissan Z, which the Z's wheelbase is technically longer. Remember, this is built off of the BMW cluster architecture. It shares that with the BMW Z4 convertible. There's still only a coupe version of the Supra. If you want a convertible, go and buy, your, buy yourself the BMW. Now, looking at these wheels, they are unique to the A91 MT. They're actually a 19 inch forged wheel uh, painted in this um, frozen gunmetal gray metallic color. Uh, you can see, I think the wheel is a huge improvement over the standard wheel that you get with that kind of crew 
two-tone chrome and black polish finish. You have these upgraded brakes with the Supra inscripted. These are Brembo four piston brakes, and I believe it's a 15 inch rotor, uh, which again should provide good stopping power for a vehicle that has this much power. And overall, the suspension hasn't really changed. Toyota did, however, calibrate the traction control system specifically for this vehicle. So we'll talk about that when we get this vehicle out on the road to test. You can see the mirrors have this kind of matte finish black cap. It's got uh, turn signal uh, repeaters on it. And then over here, you can see lots of bulging fenders. This is a really attractive looking car, pretty much for me from every angle. And then at the back here, you'll know that this is the manual and the A91 with the red Supra script over here. This is the only trim level to get the red Supra script. So keep that in mind. If you guys go for a manual premium or a manual three liter, the Supra badge won't be red. It's only on this A91 MT. You can see the taillights, really unique looking, full LEDs. You have the same rear bumper with the reverse lights that are LEDs here in the center. And then the exhaust hasn't really changed. You can still see it has the same dual oval or, or dual round tips that you find on their other three liters. And it has a really nice sound. So let's go ahead and fire it up. You can hear what it sounds like. Now, just like the automatic, that is one sweet sounding exhaust. Definitely sounds better versus its main competitor, the Nissan Z. Now, let me show you guys the trunk. There is no release here to get to the trunk. You actually have to use a button inside or use the fob and push the trunk release. But opening up this up, the trunk capacity hasn't really changed. You have around 10 cubic feet of space. This is actually a hatchback, as you can see. There's no back seats, but it does provide a decent amount of storage. But just keep in mind, the new Z and some other muscle car competitors do have more trunk space versus the Supra. So exterior wise, the manual Supra doesn't look all that different, but let's go ahead and show you guys the interior of this model here. Now, this hazelnut interior is specific to the A91 manual. And when I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is a BMW underneath. So it gives you a nice impression of quality. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. Again, BMW key fob uh, includes their smart key access system. It's really refreshing to see this six speed shifter here. Put the clutch in, the button to fire up the engine is over here. And you can hear it starts up with that typical straight six snarl. Put it into sport mode here. Oh yeah, that's a nice sound. Now. This, sup this Supra's interior hasn't really changed much, aside from the fact that they did have to redesign the center console, which I'll get to in just a moment. You can see the seats are very, very aggressively bolstered. They're actually a little bit on the narrower side. You can adjust these in 14 different ways. They're heated seats, but cooled seats are still not available on the Supra. I love this kind of hazel or this uh, hazelnut interior with the white exterior. Um, it just looks really elegant. It looks expensive. It's again, very BMW-esque. Uh, the steering wheel you can see is pretty much the same wheel. It has a tilt and telescoping design, offers a good amount of adjustability and range. The horn, oh my God, it still sounds awful. First modification I would make is to replace the horn. The door panel has soft touch injection molded plastic. Same thing over here with the dashboard. And then this is the Supra Connect infotainment system. It's technically BMW iDrive 7. It's not their newer system. It includes things like wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. But let me focus over here on the center console because you can see here it's slightly different versus the automatic. The automatic had this really big kind of plastic portion here that kind of would have gotten in the way. So they redesigned this to make it smaller. So you can basically see the placement from the steering wheel to the shifter is really, really nice. This shifter, like I mentioned earlier, has a really nice, uh, nicely sized shift knob. It feels really good in your hands. It has the typical six speed shifter uh, pattern where you have to push down or not push down. I'm sorry. You just have to slap it all the way over to the left to go into reverse. You can see once I put it into reverse, it has parking sensors. It has backup camera with trajectory. Um, the screen itself does look a little bit small. Remember, this is an 8.8 inch display. Uh, you still have your electronic parking brake, sadly. So for those of you who wanted to do those J turns, sadly, you won't be able to do that in the Supra. Uh, you can see the uh, iDrives are the Supra Connect controller is right here. This is essentially BMW iDrive. You do get a wireless phone charging pad, uh, which is nice. And then you can see the sport button over here, stability control off button over here, carbon fiber trim, a nice cup holders over here with a padded center console area, but no, not really much in terms of covered storage right here. And then you can see here in terms of the glove compartment, it's damped and it's lined with felt. It's a bin style. It's pretty nice. What 
does continue to ding the Supra, however, is the interior does feel cramped. It does com have compromised visibility. You feel like you're kind of sitting in a cave. So for those of you who are looking for a more comfortable, spacious interior, you may want to check out its muscle car competitions or the new Z. All right, so here we are finally behind the wheel of the manual transmission GR Supra. This transmission is a ZF transmission. Toyota says they've tuned it specifically for the Supra, although I'm trying to figure out what other BMWs use this transmission, um, and I can't really think of any right now, but I will say the transmission has a more German feel to it. The clutch is really long travel. It's not super heavy, which is nice, but it's, it requires me to kind of scooch up forward a little bit. The center console here, uh, as I mentioned, interior had to be redesigned slightly where this area here isn't quite as large to give me nice space. So there's, but there's a good uh, placement here where my hand just falls right on the shifter. It feels nice. I like the shift uh, shifter knob and it has a nice mechanical linkage feel to it. So it's nice to feel, or it's nice to be driving a stick shift in the Supra because I honestly never thought that Toyota was gonna do it, but a lot of you complained a lot. So Toyota was kind of forced to do a manual in this car, which I'm really glad they did. Now, compared to the automatic Supra, this is a little bit slower zero to 60 wise, but it's gonna give you more of that engaging feel. It also has Toyota's active rev matching, which is definitely really nice. You can also turn that off if you like. And the engine still has that nice growl to it. <laughs> that's, that's nice. I definitely already like this more than the uh, 400 or the Nissan Z that we drove a couple months ago. Um, the transmission definitely, I think I prefer the Z's manual a little bit more, but I like the engine in this car. It's just a, a nice, nice sounding engine, but put your foot down here. Really great torque, really great response. I don't really feel much in terms of turbo lag. Um, the suspension has been adjusted for 2023, but the Supra just has a really nice, playful feel to it. It feels sportier than the Z, and the engine just sounds really good. I love the noise this thing makes. It has a great sound. The burbles and crackles, they're not quite as um, noticeable as the automatic model. The automatic, you can always just blip the throttle, or you use the paddles, and you always just got a sense of the noise and the burbles, which is always a great thing. But yeah, the manual definitely is gonna give you that more engaging feel, which is a nice thing to have, but you just have to keep in mind it's a little bit slower, but this is probably going to make a lot of people trade in their automatic Supras, I have to admit that now. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise in this vehicle. Now, keep in mind, we are at around 4,000 feet above sea level, uh, and the manual does not have launch control. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get close to that 4.2, uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna be probably a second slower at least because of that, but I have it in sport. We're gonna leave the traction control on, I think, and we're just gonna try slowly feathering the throttle in. I don't wanna launch it too aggressively because I don't know how it's gonna react, but let's just see what we can get. That uh, cut the power pretty bad. Ooh, it chirps into second really nice. 5.77 seconds there, so. Not bad for my first run, considering we are at around 4,000 feet above sea level. Uh, but I do wanna see, let's try turning off the traction control this time, because it did cut power pretty abruptly. Okay. Alrighty, so traction control is still off, and uh, let's see if I can get a slightly better time this time. Still cuts power pretty bad there. Woo! 5.5 there. This car actually will reach 60 in second gear, which is nice. Um, and you know, honestly, we are at a mile above sea level. I think that if you got the launch right and you're in an area that's not super high in elevation, you should be able to do a low four second run. Actually, I really like the way this feels because remember, it's got that shorter final drive ratio that helps improve acceleration. The um, traction control has been modified to essentially work better with the manual model. Uh, so you just get a sense that it doesn't feel like it was just taken off of the shelf and just bolted onto this car. It feels like it works well with the vehicle. It's just gonna take me some time to actually get the launch right because um, you have to practice with this car. And this is honestly my first time driving it. Okay. You're, you're launching it from like 2,000. Should I just, traction? should I turn off everything? Uh, <laughs> I'll do sport traction. Yeah. But you can dump it a little harder than it. You're still bumping it. I am, so 3,000, you think? I think 3,000, three, maybe just slightly above it. See what happens. Alrighty, 
We're going to try launching it at a little over three. Let's see. That's better. There you go, Rob. Woo! <laughs> 4.72. Good job, Rob. <laughs> He's a better manual driver than me, but yeah, that's uh, that's much better. That's actually the same zero to sixty we got in the manual shift Z. Yeah. The manual right. shift Z, and this puts the power down a lot better. And that was only your third time. You can yeah. Get a little better. Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's impressive. I am. I must admit that's very impressive because I got around four seconds in the automatic. And keep in mind, we are at four thousand feet above sea level here. This car still feels really quick. Actually, I love the feel of this car. It just feels properly fast. The engine has really nice noises and it just kind of makes you want to drive this car. So yeah, the manual definitely is an enticing option. And I suspect a lot of people who have been waiting for a stick shift super, if you bought the automatic, you might want to consider trading it for the manual. I really, I really don't think that I'm that fat, but I think that this thing can do 0 to 60 in 4.4, maybe? Sofian's only like 120 pounds, so taking him out doesn't do much. Uh, 4.43. I'll take it. I'll take it. So as good as the GR Supra is with the eight-speed automatic transmission, after spending the day driving the six-speed manual, I have to say, this really surprised me. I mean, I expected the GR Supra to be good with the manual, but I didn't expect it to be this good. It has a really amazing shifter. It's a ZF German-built transmission that's just perfectly paired with this three-liter turbo engine. I was also surprised at how well this vehicle launches. I mean, dump the clutch at 3,000 RPM with the traction control off. It puts the power down really well, very unexpectedly, unexpectedly stable. And the best zero to 60 time that we actually got off camera was around 4.5 seconds. My videographer editor was able to do that as well, which makes this vehicle plenty fast. In fact, here at 4,000 elevation, I was surprised at how quick this car actually was. So I'll be excited to see what I can get for this vehicle when I bring it back to the PA area when we can test it on a more level surface. But overall, this vehicle here, there are very subtle differences to tell you that it's a manual. Obviously this frozen white or this uh, uh, burnout exterior color and the matte finish with that red super badge, that's how you're going to know if somebody is next to you at the light with a manual model. No, it's going to be a slow, a little bit slower, but it's also going to be a lot more fun. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are looking to buy the manual Supra, it is heading to dealerships now. And the cool thing about the manual is it starts at the same price as the automatic, 52,500 for the base three liter model. If you guys want the premium, I believe it's an extra $4,000 for the premium. This uh, A91 MT, they're only building about 500 of these, uh, is going to start at around 58995 Add $1,700 for this paint charge plus destination, and you're looking at a little over $62,000. So $62,000 makes it the most expensive Supra that you can buy right now. But honestly, it's still really well priced because if you want a comparison or a competitor like the Nissan Z with the manual, they're going to be in the mid 50s. And just keep in mind, this special edition version is going to be more expensive because it's a little bit more exclusive. But I suspect for those of you who own the GR Supra, you've been waiting for the manual and you have the automatic, you might be kicking yourself because you're probably going to want to trade this in, especially if you're all about saving the manuals. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Toyota GR Supra. With the stick shift, if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. As, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll, take, I'll catch you all in the next video.